I think in many ways it is the worst of times. I mean, schools are really facing terrible, terrible economic pressures right now. But I think if we do some bold things, this could be the best of times. Put the kids first, and we have to talk about what that looks like. I'm having somebody of John's caliber come and lead the discussion for us. It only raises more questions. I was here three years ago. Do you still have a lot of the same teachers? I do. I think it throws down the gauntlet for Chattanooga. It seems like this is an opportune time to have a national conversation. You have people well known throughout the country and the world, and then you bring them here and say, look, we have a message that's very important, that's pertinent to the society and this community, and what are you going to do about it? It's a real pleasure for me to introduce tonight's honored guest and speaker. John Marrow is a national education expert and education correspondent for PBS's NewsHour with Jim Lehrer. We, we've been following New Orleans on the NewsHour with this kind of a serial. Marrow has been a teacher chapters. in junior high, high school, college, graduate school, and federal prison. The reason I became a teacher was my uh, two English teachers I had when, in high school. They were challenging, they were fascinating, but the bar was here. And they were never saying, oh, good for you, John, and let you meet in the middle somewhere. Um, it was for me, and so I'm always interested in teachers like that. Marketing is seven, because we had to borrow, didn't we? But the bar Very has good. to be high. And that's what's so wonderful about the Benwood Schools, is the bar is high. Today, I spent a good part of the morning visiting two Benwood schools, uh, Orchard Knob and East Side. The teacher let me take over the class. Or you have to all close your eyes. Everybody has to close your eyes. And I wrote a sentence on the silly, nonsense sentence on the board. You know, the fish ate the green pancake. Okay, open your eyes and read the story. The fish ate the and they, not, they read it, and, but that's not really the test. The test is, did they know that it was stupid? Does the story make sense? No. Why not? Pancake, fish don't eat pancake. Fish don't eat pancake. You guys can read. Yeah, and they all, yeah, and they were quick to tell me. And that's really the test. That's the best. Once you know how to read, you can do anything. You can do anything. Thank you very much. I'll let you go back to work. Yeah. That's so cool. Intelligence is randomly distributed. It's not given to just the rich kids. Um, and and what, what the public schools here uh, demonstrate is that if you do it right, it really works. Uh, and and then, then you have to say, well, why don't we do it for every, everybody? Yeah. Now, this young man in this next clip is an earnest, very affable, capable junior high school coach who was assigned by his superintendent to teach high school English, history, and math. So this is from an English class. The next word will be strenuous. Strenuous is spelled S T R E N. O U S. Strenuous. That's not how strenuous is spelled. You know, it's it's a it's a laugh line, but there's no do-over for the kids. He hit the nail on the head with the examples he used and what the problems are. Well, it gets people talking. <laughs> it definitely gets people talking. But it'll hopefully open up the eyes of a lot of the educators and the superintendents. The lady that was sitting next to me was taking notes. We're gonna talk about this. We're gonna talk about this. The question I think you have to ask is who loses? And in almost every case, it's the kids. The biggest challenge, and this would not make people happy, but the biggest challenge is that there are a lot of adults in the system who make a fairly decent living being mediocre. It starts with often the teacher unions, but school boards. Um, I would say there are a lot of lawyers in special education. Uh, there are dropout prevention specialists who don't prevent anybody from dropping out. There are bubble test makers. There are lots of people who, uh, if you, to change the system, you have to upset that apple cart, and that's very hard to do. The sense I have of Chattanooga is that you guys are, are ready to have that conversation. It would be hard to have it in New York. This is the kind of thing you'd chew on and say, what is it, what is it we want? 
It has to be a big list. It can't be just be able to do well on bubble tests. We've created a culture. We've seen it evolve. I had lunch with 20 or so of your principals. And let me tell you, Chattanooga, you are fortunate to have uh, so many inspired and competent leaders. So the idea of the federal government having a mechanism that says you're not good enough, that's okay with you. I can't afford many more years of kind of an indifferent, uh, indifferent education. I did a documentary about ADD. Everybody knows ADD, right? You know, it stands for Attention Deficit Disorder. I don't think so. Not anymore. I think it stands for Affection Deficit Disorder nationally, and we, we, we have an affection deficit. Um, we don't care enough about those kids you saw, um, despite the fact that you've proven here and it's just shown elsewhere, they have just as much potential as anyone else. Bandwood schools are really doing well, uh, and other people should say, let's try to copy what these guys are doing, because you're doing the right stuff. It seems to me Chattanooga has a better chance of doing this than any place I know. And you've seen what happens when you do it right, and you've seen these kids go up. Because I think we can create schools that are not afflicted with this affection deficit disorder. And you can do it now and make this the best of times for public education. What do you think the story will be about? Take a